Welcome to Capital Class. I'm Adam Geary. We founded Capital Class to share candid conversations with market-leading businesses while humanizing the journey of constructing an enterprise. Innovation is often found at the edge of discomfort. To recognize a problem is to be human. However, to build the solution is to be an entrepreneur. In the instance of today's guest, her problem was a sudden bout of cancer and the realization that foods that both tasted good and good for you were scarce. Her solution to this problem? Create the nation's largest natural cookie dough brand. The journey from bedroom recipes to boardroom success is a lesson in dogged perseverance. In today's class, we follow a different format, joining our guest on her journey to an enterprise. From starting a business from scratch, literally and figuratively, to chance encounter with Hoda Kotb's Blackberry, propelling her organization to new heights. To share this story, we are joined by Lauren Brill, founder and CEO of Sweet Lauren's Cookie Dough. Today's episode, Lauren shares her unedited adventure from cookie enthusiast to cookie entrepreneur. We hope you enjoy. Lauren, welcome to Capital Class. Hello. Thank you for having me. It has been a minute. It has been a minute. Let's start there. Five years ago, we met on a bench. (laughs) Okay. We met on a bench in New York City and after an awesome conversation, exchange of number and a cookie coupon, (laughs) definitely a first and definitely a New York City story. Yeah. We became friends. Definitely. And I, I will tell you that at the early days, this is probably five years ago, I returned back to Florida and found your cookies at that time, cookie dough, I should say, in Publix, like a yep. Florida mainstay grocery for those not in Florida. And now I find your product everywhere. So let me start by congratulating you on the journey. Thank you so much. I mean, it's, uh, I'm still giving out coupons to strangers <laughs> on, on park benches. Um, but we've, we've really been, we've just, we've worked our butt off and, um, you know, it feels great that kind of it's my dream and the, the vision of sweet Lawrence is coming to reality. So before we go into the journey, cause that's what today's about, give our listeners like the 30 seconds. What's sweet Lawrence? Sweet Lawrence is America's number one natural cookie dough brand Everything we do is clean ingredients, so everything's super delicious taste, high-quality ingredients, no junk, but it's also non-GMO, gluten-free, plant-based, dairy-free, peanut tree nut-free, free free of the top allergens. So whatever your lifestyle is, uh, we're there for you in terms of better for you, and um, we never have to make you compromise on taste. And I started the company because I overcame cancer in my early 20s, and so I'm incredibly passionate about bringing clean ingredients and delicious taste together and making it accessible to anyone so that we can live our best lives. And I can attest, they are absolutely addicting and delicious. But I do feel a little bit better because I know how healthy they are. Exactly. I mean, it's still a decadent cookie, but all of our cookie dough is safety raw. It comes in this awesome packaging. So it's pre-portioned. So you could just take one or two if you wanted and you know you can make them in your toaster oven regular oven yeah they're they're the best they're delicious and you feel good physically and mentally absolutely and when you started the company how big were you when i started the company i mean i i was a one woman show you know i did right. everything and so the first store we got into was a whole foods in new york city and from there i personally drove to every single whole foods in the northeast to get us into to give samples and meet with the buyer of all those stores. And, and, and then, you know, through a million stories later, you know, of just hustling, um, I got a meeting with public supermarkets and then Kroger supermarkets. And, you know, on our first meetings, they brought us in and, you know, we became really a nationally distributed company about five years ago, right. You know, right as I met you probably. Wow. And how big are you now? Now we're in over 15,000 supermarkets. Um, Our products, you know, we're the number one natural cookie dough brand in the U.S. So we're sold in, you know, the refrigerated 
dough section of almost every supermarket. So we're in Target, Whole Foods, Publix, Kroger, Wegmans, Stop and Shop. You know, the list goes on. I mean, you know, on our website, you can always throw in your zip code and find where we're sold near you because it's a lot of small stores too. But um, yeah, we're we're really, you know, that's the goal of the brand, right? I, I didn't want it just to be sold in specialty supermarkets so that um, only people in certain areas or um, that could afford a certain price could have it. I really wanted to make Sweet Lauren's accessible, you know, in the targets of the world and, and in Whole Foods, you know, so that we're reaching kind of everyone who might care about clean food. I love it. So we invite you to the show, not just because your professional success and story, which is obvious, but I think the journey, this personal story, you graduate college, right? Like most, we probably all were, bright eyes, right? Like here we are ready to take on the world. And as you mentioned earlier, you run head on into cancer. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, you know, 22 years old, I grew up in New York city. I just graduated from USC in LA. I, I, I felt invincible. You know, I think a lot of us do in our early twenties, you know, you feel like you're so excited to have your first job and figure out your whole beautiful, bright future. And a couple months after I graduated, I found like a lump in my neck and I went to the doctor and he felt my lymph nodes and I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. I had stage two and I had to start chemo immediately. And man, was it an incredibly scary time. And so, you know, I think I just grew up a lot then. I learned how precious life is and how important health is. I mean, if you don't have your health, you have nothing. And so to me, just everything I do comes through kind of that lens. Um, and so, you know, I, I felt what it was like to hit rock bottom or feel like, you know, cause I, even if I got through the treatment, I just felt like I was so beaten up by it. And, um, I don't know, part of me was almost embarrassed by it too, but also just so knocked down and where I felt like all my friends were like, you know, already like in jobs and, you know, they're not scarred yet. You know, they like, they were just, you know, excited to be in their twenties. And I'd felt like I was, you know, by the time I finished treatment, I felt like I was, I was 23, but I really felt like I was probably in my forties or fifties. Cause I just felt like I just had, you know, just real reality check, you know? And so it made me look at life in a really different way. And, um, during when I went through treatment, I just got so passionate about like, I will do anything I can to feel better. I will do anything I can to make sure I get through this. And I was so passionate about feeling good. You know, when you feel really bad, you realize how terrible that feels. And I just was so passionate about feeling good. And so I started, I was already a yoga instructor. So I was already really into kind of, you know, health and wellness to a certain extent, but like I dove deep. And so I started to study nutrition and I started to take cooking classes because I thought, Food is fuel. It's just the most basic thing. If I don't feed myself good stuff, I'm not going to have high quality energy. So I started to just eat really clean, meaning just a lot of fresh whole food, you know, less processed, less refined food. And I took cooking classes because I was like, I just want to cook simply, but have taste, have food taste really good because the only reason people normally don't eat healthy is because it normally doesn't taste as good. So if I could figure out how to make healthier food taste delicious, it's a win-win and I'll have that tool for the rest of my life. And so I felt like it was really easy to make delicious salads and proteins and grains and veggies, but I have a huge sweet tooth. Um, I always have, my whole family has, and I just couldn't find anything in bakeries or the supermarket that were really delicious, really worth the indulgence and calories, and but made of ingredients I actually really wanted in my body. And so that's where you know I just had this aha moment of like, I can't find it. Well, I'm determined to make it myself. So you leave college without a peer, right? Your peer group is often kind of doing their own thing and you're fighting cancer, right? Which is not a typical post-college experience. And then you kind of embark on a new journey, right? So you, you leave 23 years old, maybe with an emotional IQ of 43, as you said, <laughs> and that leads you down a road to start a cookie dough business. Exactly. Well, you know, it's funny when I think back after, you know, I really saw this need in the market. You know, I felt like it was easy to make these delicious salads and, you know, foods. And, 
But when I couldn't find a great tasting cookie and I started to look every, and I'm in New York City. So I'm like, if it doesn't exist here, it's probably, yeah. it doesn't exist, you yeah. know? And so I looked everywhere and I, you know, I kept finding extremes. Like you could find like a lot of vegan health food cookies, but they didn't taste delicious. They were like made of dates and like dark chocolate and like almonds. And you're like, this is not a cookie. You know, this is kind of a granola bar snack or, you know, the extreme opposite, like all these amazing bakeries are in New York City, but they're so sweet. And, you know, most of them just use the same all-purpose white flour, tons of refined sugar. You know, they're, they don't care really about the fuel or ingredients they're putting in there. So I honestly felt like the secret door opened. Like, I don't know how else to describe it, but that I was like, oh my God, like I could create this. Like, and I, and the, what got me more and more excited about it was once I started to recipe test and granted, you know, I didn't have a full-time job yet. I was still in treatment. And you know, so, so I would do this during my days off of treatment and I needed something to like keep me going and to like stimulate me intellectually. And, and, you know, so I think like, you know, it was very, and, th- and baking is very therapeutic. You know, a lot of people like to bake it like, you know, at the end of the day or with their family, it's like, it's very bonding and nurturing and it's therapeutic. So it was very healing for me um, in a certain way, you know, it just makes people happy. So it's like, it's something you like being around. And so I think, you know, what got me more and more excited about it was, you know, the first recipes were terrible, let me tell you, um, because I tried, you know, every type of, you know, sugar replacement out there from, you know, stevia to, to every single type, you know, maple syrup, coconut sugar. I tried every single thing possible, every type of flour, every type of oil. And, and eventually it started to taste really good. And when I saw the reaction that other people had, that's when it just went like, aha, like I just knew it was powerful. I knew that I wasn't the only one who wanted it. And, and I just knew that I was just excited. I think about finding a way to turn this whole negative experience into like a positive. And, you know, I felt like I had built kind of a superpower around like understanding natural ingredients and being so passionate about it that, you know, I just felt like I cared more than anyone else. Did you think cookie dough or cookies in the beginning? So, I mean, you know, it's funny. Again, I just watched human human behavior. And what was really interesting is people would get more excited about the cookie dough. Like I would, of course I'd show up to like friends' houses or give my neighbors fresh cookies out of the oven. And the first thing I hear them say is like, oh my God, like the melt in the mouth, the warm chocolate, like this is next level experience. And they'd be like, wait a minute, could I just grab some of your cookie dough so I could bake it tomorrow when like my friends come over? Um, or can I eat it raw? And I started to realize like the warm, fresh out of the oven, nothing beats that. And then also the fact that you, it was safe to eat raw. It just, nothing beats that. Which is that. generally a no, no, right? Like don't eat cookie dough raw. You know, you can, see, you can I almost hear my mother like, don't eat the dough, right? You're of like, course. Excuse me. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah. You're not supposed to normally eat cookie dough raw because, you know, whether it's a long shot or not, you know, people don't want to get sick. And so you could potentially get salmonella or E. coli or some bacteria from either the eggs, you know, putting eating raw eggs or the flour um, can have moisture and it can kind of, you know, collect things like that. So yeah, uh, we, you, we, so yeah, with Sweet Lawrence, like it was always, it was always safe. We don't use, um, all of our flowers are naturally heat treated because we use oat flour now and things like that. So you safety raw, but then also we don't use eggs. So, you know, you also just don't have to worry. And so, yeah, I just, I, I, that to me, and then I also, then I started to look at the market and I was like, wait a minute, there's a million cookies out there. And it's also just hard. You know, if you make a fresh batch of cookies, they don't taste great the next day. They don't taste the best in two weeks. So I just thought, man, like I love a chewy cookie. You know, if I try to package this, it's the, the, the taste will suffer. And, you know, so that's why I liked cookie dough as well. And then, and then finally, when I just really looked at like supermarkets, I was like, wow, there is no brand name in natural cookie dough. Like if I have kids tomorrow, they're going to grow up on like the same brands that were around when I was little, which I know too. I know too much now. I don't want to eat that stuff. It tastes really cheap. It doesn't taste healthy. I don't want it, you know. And so that was really 
like the idea for Sweet Lawrence was to create a brand that the next generation and beyond can grow up with, like something that we just all know better now, you know, something that you really could feel good about. But I love the idea of a 24 ish year old Lauren figuring out an entire market segment <laughs> against like all the major manufacturers of cookies and all those <laughs> items. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that was really interesting was I've always been interested in business, but I mean, my family wasn't in the food industry. So, you know, I, I, I had no one really to help me, but I took this business writing course when I got serious about the concept for Sweet Lauren's and this in one of the classes, you know, they started to have you like just kind of break down the bare bones of like what it would cost to get your company up and running. And so I looked at the three different like avenues I could have gone. Like I was like, I could open a bakery and I used to work at a bakery, like one of the best bakeries in New York city. It's called Levan bakery. Of course. It's awesome. Yeah. You yeah, know, incredible. right. Incredible. So lo love the two women who started it. Like they're still mentors of mine to this day. And so, and I loved working there because like it made people happy. There was a line out the door for their cookies and it just was awesome. But I am someone who loves to travel. I'm someone who loves to be free. And so like, and then, so I costed out what it would cost for like to rent some place in New York city, you know, and open up a bakery. And then I just had this vision of like, oh my God, like the oven's going to break one day or like the toilet bowl needs fixing or, you know, and I don't want to be stuck in this bakery fixing things. Like I want something that gives me freedom. And so like the idea of a bakery between like looking at the numbers of like what you'd need to just, you know, the, the day you open, you have to start paying money for rent. So that was too, that was not a business plan that was going to be good for me. Then I looked at, you know, baked packaged cookies and I just looked at how competitive that market is and would, would it, my product, my cookie really have that wow factor if it was sitting on the shelf for a long time. And so between like, it just didn't excite me, you know, and it's not really what I saw other people get excited about. And then when I looked at cookie dough, I was like, okay, cool. I could have a factory do this. You know, I don't know where, but I'll find one. And, you know, we really could be, um, I just saw the white space. Like I was like, this makes absolutely no sense. You know, and I originally, you know, I shopped at Whole Foods because that's what was close to me. I cared about clean ingredients and, um, you know, Whole Foods really didn't have like a brand name there. Um, and so I was like, if it doesn't exist here, like I need, I need to be the first to market. When you started this product, you know, you go, okay, I'm going to go down the route of, it's not going to be a bakery, but it is going to be some sort of item in that space. You start to do the manufacturing. You had to have had some pretty substantial doubts. And if not doubts on your own, doubters who are saying, hey, you know, you're 25 or maybe you're 26. What's up with your career? Like where? And I bring that up because most people you hear, most people we've interviewed, my own experience, there's a point there where you get this external voice, like maybe you should get a real job or like maybe you should get going down this kind of very atypical path and the forging forward is where the real value is. And so can you talk a little about that? So, you know, I, the concept started to grow when I was around 23, but I didn't start it full time immediately. I spent the next three years trying to work for other people like trying to be a normal person. I was like, oh, I should be, I'm in New York City. I should be in finance. Like I hear they make a lot of money and like they're very professional and like, you know, I, I could get any job after I'm good in finance. And, you know, like I interviewed in a million places and just like it was never a fit. And then I started working for a PR company and I was like, this like I'm representing other people's things. Like it just doesn't feel, I'm not passionate about, you know, these other products. And, um, I worked for a restaurant. I managed a restaurant in New York. And, um, I think that's where it just, it kind of confirmed that like food to me is healing and food to me brings people a lot of happiness. And I like really love, like, I love being in the food industry. I'm just passionate about it. And, but I also am passionate about the business aspect of it. And so, you know, I think I just started to piece things together and, and then I was always baking as a hobby and it really was my favorite thing. Um, but I, you know, I wasn't ready yet to jump out. And then um, in my business writing course that I told you about, this guy in my class worked in Whole Foods. You know, he was starting his own business. He wanted to open up a bike shop and 
he worked the overnight shift at Whole Foods restocking shelves, you know, to make money. And so I was like, Corey, how does one get into Whole Foods? And he was like, I don't know, I'll ask my bot, I'll ask the manager and like get back to you. And then, you know, at our next meeting, he was like, Lauren, you have, you know, a meeting with the buyer this week. Like, get ready. And I was like, what are you talking about? I mean, I had a website and it said coming soon. I had no official product packaging, factory, none of it yet. But he pushed me to like meet with him. And I and I just made a deal with myself. Like at that one moment, I was like, I am miserable working for someone else. Like miserable. I'm not meant to work for someone else. Both my parents were entrepreneurs. And I, I just saw to myself, I was like, I want to be free in life. I want to do something that has a positive impact on the world. I want to be passionate about what I do. I want to love waking up every day. Like life is precious. I got to spend it on things that I love. And I just made a deal with myself. I was like, Lauren, if you're going to, if you're not getting a job for someone else, it's all going to rely on you. So you got to show up, mean what you say, like be a hundred percent dedicated and just make magic happen because no one's going to build this for me. And that's what I did. I had a meeting with Whole Foods. I told him my story. I, I learned that vulnerability and just being really real and authentic with my story instead of trying to hide it, like, oh, I just invented these recipes. I was like, no, I was really sick. And like, this is what I've learned. I, I actually feel really good eating this way. And I've seen hundreds of other people feel the same way between friends and friends of friends now and neighbors. And you know, no one's built the next brand name in kind of better for you cookie dough. There doesn't exist. And the buyer just really got it. And he, you know, so once he said yes, I just, I, I was like, I will do anything I can and everything I can to make sure I turn this opportunity into success. Because, you know, I, I just sell the Whole Foods account without the actual like product, the packaging. So, I mean, uh, so I made 12 – I had all these recipes I was working on, but I had no idea what would actually, you know, translate into a product. So I went to him with this, like, beautiful box that had 12 different freshly baked cookies in it. Like, it was crazy. I made all these different flavors to give him. And then I – and I had a one-pager on what Sweet Lauren stood for. My story, the kind of ingredients we would use, um, you know, why we existed, and, you know – Food, you know, tasting is everything. So he brought them back to his other colleagues and then called me the next day and was like, we've never tasted something so good. Like, how soon can we get this as cookie dough? And, you know, I asked him, he, I was like, I was like, oh, we can make baking mixes. We can make cookie dough. Oh, we can do anything. Like, just place an order with me. And, and he was like, I really like the idea of cookie dough, you know, because, you you know, it'll have a longer shelf life. You know, it's not, it's not going to go stale in three days, like a baked cookie and, and all of that. And so, yeah, he took a chance on us. I'm forever grateful. He was like, how soon till, will it be ready? I was like, one month. And in my head, I really thought, I'll find a factory, design packaging, figure it out. But it took seven months. And, you know, but he, I stayed in touch with him. He he got us in, you know. And and then I launched in Whole Foods. I also won, like, within within kind of three months, I won a contest in New York called The Next Big Small Brand for Culinary Genius. And I won like the People's Choice Award and the next big small brand. And I was up against these other really awesome food companies. And so that gave me huge confidence. Then I started to get a lot of press because people started to hear about the story. And between all those things, it gave me the confidence to like track down Hoda copy from the Today Show. And it helped get people going into Whole Foods to try try Sweet Lauren's and, you know, it, it, it helped launch us, you know, and it helped give me confidence that it wasn't just family and friends saying they loved it, but, you know, that real people were excited about this product and the story behind it. I imagine almost like initially you're elated, right? Like Whole Foods. And even though Whole Foods wasn't a name that it is today, but it still, it still had a, a following. Oh yeah. Whole Foods just said they'll take an order. And you just said 30 days and that took seven months, right? And there must've been a lot of kind of growth that happened in those seven months. Hustle, so much hustle. I mean, I, and I should also say during this time, my mom passed away. She had a type of cancer, unfortunately. She had a type of leukemia and she passed away. And I think at that moment, I just, I had nothing left to lose. Like, I just was like, 
I will give anything and everything I can to like build a life that I love. And I'm just, I like, that's it. And so I think that like, it was such a hard time, but thankfully I had Sweet Lauren's because it started to grow from the day I launched it. And so even though I was going through this really hard time losing my mother, I also had this really exciting thing that was growing. And so it gave me, you know, it gave me purpose and passion every day. And it gave me something I could kind of put all of that energy and anger and, you know, sadness into and really say like, I'm going to turn all these negative things into a positive. But yeah, I mean, you can only imagine. I just started Google like factories, you know, cookie dough factories in the US, you know, and then finding them closer to me. And, you know, a lot of the big cookie dough factories out there, you know, they require thousands of pounds at one time just to run through their machinery because they have very big mixers. And so, you know, when I'm like, hey, I'm just starting, I'm, I mean, I got into one store. Can you make like, you know, just a little small batch for this one store. I mean, they're like laughing, you know? And so I found this tiny factory um, in upstate New York and I took a bus up to it because it was like a three, three and a half hour drive. I just took a bus up to it. They'd never made cookie dough, but they had the mixers. So I like taught them how to make cookie dough. You know, I'm guessing and learning as I go to. And, you know, because you don't want to lose any money and you're dealing with like, you know, a small budget with everything. I mean, I just had to be extra on my game, you know? So like we had to throw out, I think the first one or two batches because, you know, you scale up a recipe, you make a small batch in your own kitchen and then all of a sudden you bring make it at a bigger batch. It's going to slightly change. It's not just, you know, you multiply it by five or something like that. Like it's chemistry, baking really changes. And so after that, I was like, we're not throwing out anymore. Like I'm going to really zone in and understand how each ingredient plays with one another and, you know, be able to tweak it. And you realize when you have to be scrappy, how much more you can get, you know, out of yourself and and everything else, you know, when you really, really care about everything. There's like an acuity, right? Like a sharpness you have. Totally. In those, in those depths. And I do feel like success dulls that, right? Like you're, yeah. you're allowed to make more mistakes because maybe you have more financial means or there's, but in the early days, you know everything. You you focus on everything. Everything matters. Yeah. And I think that's what I was just telling you that like now present day, we're working on um, putting together like these 10 business principles that are kind of the way we do business. And, you know, really one of them is that that scrappy attitude of caring about every dollar and like really watching things is part of our DNA because – Sure, now we have a bigger budget, but now that just like the stakes are higher, like you you can't be cocky and just launch a product if you don't know it's going to be successful. Like you need to have that same care and attention and to everything. It's really what's made us successful and something I, I want to make sure we preserve as we get bigger. But, you know, I just remember, you know, I was in one Whole Foods. Then I got us into two more Whole Foods close by um, in Manhattan and then also in Brooklyn. And how do you get that delivered? right? Like a big distributor isn't going to say yes to like three stores. So I hired this guy that worked, Enrique worked at the factory, just offered to pay him if he would drive in and, you know, every week or two and just deliver every time we got a new order. And so that's how we did it until I got into more stores. I love that story. I mean, it was so, it was so kind of ghetto, but um, it worked. It works. I think it's more than that, right? I think it's about there's just a will, right? I, I think your story speaks to that. You get cancer. You don't just sit around during the cancer process. You pour yourself into something, right? Then that begins to grow and you lose your mother, right? And that, instead of being a net negative, right, that's a fuel. And I think that's a lot of your story. You know, ev every business has a bit of fortune. Let me ask you this, right? You Things work in your favor. You, you flash this story for a second, but I have to hear it. You end up tracking down Hoda Catby and somehow her Blackberry's in your hand. You have to tell me this story and like how, what that meant for your business. Yeah, it was, she's, oh God, I love her so much. She's such a special uh, person. So I, I mean, it's another story of just like me not giving up. I met her. You remember when they used to have like fashion night out? 
They used to have yes. like New York City fashion night out. And so I was out um, at that and we were on Madison Ave and I was with my aunt and uncle and my younger sister. And then Hoda walks in with like her group of girlfriends um, to this like, you know, kind of fancy first store that we were in. And and my sister says, just go up to her. And I had my first business cards that were literally handwritten. Like it said Sweet Lauren's in my handwriting with my cell phone and they weren't like printed business cards. And anyway, I went up to her and just said, Hoda, I'm such a fan. I have a cookie company. I know you have a sweet tooth. It's a healthy cookie company. It's cookie dough actually. I just think you're going to love it. Could I get you samples? And she literally gave me her Blackberry. Like just so trusting, so sweet. I mean, she totally could have been like, please don't bother me. I'm out with my girlfriends. But of course. Gave me her BlackBerry and was like, email yourself through my phone, you know, my email so that I get your, so I, you know, I get your email and I can respond. And I was like, awesome. So I get her <laughs> BlackBerry and I'm like, to Lauren, great meeting you. <laughs> fashion night out. I can't wait to try your cookie dough. Love Hoda. And then her, one of her friends that was with her gave me her card as well. And her, she was like, oh, we have a showroom. I like, I'd love to try your cookies too. And I was like, great, I'll get you samples too. So Hoda never wrote back and, but her friend did. And so her, I dropped off samples to her friend and her friend was like, these are delicious. Like you, did you give them to Hoda? And I was like, Hoda didn't write back. And she was like, oh, she's so busy. Okay. Well, I'm meeting her for drinks tomorrow. Why don't you meet us for drinks? And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> so I show up, you know, when they're meeting for drinks at this like really nice restaurant and, you know, poor Hoda. I'm like, there's that girl again that just keeps popping up. And, and I'm like, hi, Hoda. I just like really want you to know like these are special, like, you know, and I give her the whole spiel and she's like, okay, okay, great. Then I don't hear from her again. But granted, I really wasn't big enough yet. Like we were only in a couple stores. And so then Fast forward to, I went with one of my mom's best friends. We went to this kind of lecture for women and Hoda happened to, was, was there doing part of the interview. And then she was doing a book signing after. So I went and did the book signing with her and, you know, said hi all over again. And then, you know, she looked at me and she was like, when you're ready, you email me and you let me know when you want to go on the show, you know, but you got to be ready for it. And I was like, okay, okay. Like we're working on all these things. And that's really what happened. I mean, it was, a, it was, you know, hustle and luck and all those things, but, you know, I waited. So I launched our first packaging, you know, in Whole Foods. And then, as I told you, I won this contest right afterwards called the next big small brand for culinary genius. And what I won was branding and design work. So basically I spent that first year that we were in Whole Foods I was at one woman show giving out the samples and I would just, it was like gold. You know, I would hear from so many customers, all these different things like, you know, uh, do you have these flavors? The packaging color should change, you know, too sweet, too salty, whatever the comments were. I heard enough of them that I really, really took it to heart and took all of that customer feedback, you know, the ones that I'd heard over and over again and was like, I know how to make this even better. So I knew that we should change our packaging. I knew what to do. So that branding and design work, they were redesigning our packaging. So then I switched to a bigger cookie dough factory we designed this beautiful packaging. And then the second it launched is when I knew we needed to do something big. And that's when I emailed Hoda. You know, I emailed her on like a Monday and she was like, okay, can you, can you be on Friday? You know? And I was like, oh my God, you know, you say yes, you don't say no to that. But, you know, and I just remember that the customer service line, of course, went to my cell phone because, you know, I was the only one in the company. And I just remember the second I went on, my phone just blew up and it just didn't stop ringing. I couldn't make phone calls for like 24 hours. It just wouldn't stop. And and then, you know, hearing messages from like grandmas across the country and all these different type of people that were looking for a product like ours, it's what me it's what gave me energy to to keep going. Cause I was like, Fueled your tank again. Yeah, like there's a need and there's yeah. so many different types of needs. Like people have health issues. They're looking for products without dairy or a lot of, you know, marathon runners and like just, you know, people that were really athletic were like really caring about the ingredients they were putting in their body. And I just was like hearing from all different types of people, from like a mom to a grandmother to, you know, a retired police officer to, you know, and I was just like, oh my God, 
I could make so many people happy and we could really make a difference in the world. And like, I know how to do this. Is that the time in your business life where it just clicked? Where like the cookie, the cookie was carrying you instead of you carrying the cookie? No, not yet. I mean, I will say, I felt like I was pushing a boulder up a hill for a long time. I mean, that, that was, you know, that was definitely a good highlight and like enough energy to keep going. So Originally, Sweet Lauren's recipe was um, just natural, like a, a very clean and natural. It wasn't it wasn't allergen friendly. It wasn't like gluten free. So some people that know the original Sweet Lauren's like still ask for the original back. But you know, it's like I launched Sweet Lauren's as this like natural recipe, and then I got a meeting with Publix, and they brought us in, you know, to all stores overnight, and that was unbelievable. And I'm forever grateful. I love public so much. And then Kroger did the same thing. Kroger was an amazing partner, brought us into all supermarkets overnight. And so, you know, all of a sudden we were, that's when we became really a nationally distributed company and we're taken really seriously because we weren't just in like some specialty high-end stores anymore. It's like we were in mass America and if it did well in mass America, the sky's the limit, right? Because then you're like, oh my God, like, you know, this is proving that in every state people need this, you know, um, not just in a couple. And so, and then, you know, you're really competing with the big guys too. And so like, that's what got me excited was like, I want to win. I want to show that like clean food can win and should win and that people deserve better. And so what was really interesting was, you know, now that sold in thousands of supermarkets, I started to get even more emails and messages from people saying they love the concept, but their husband is gluten-free. Could we make a gluten-free version? Their kid has a nut allergy. Could we make a nut-free version? All these things. And that's when I I was like, okay, I'm going to make an allergen kind of free line and see how it does. And so I found another factory and then la- made this recipe. It's very hard to make a recipe that's gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, you know, plant-based, all the things and taste delicious, but made it, launched it, and it became our number one skew overnight. And so for the last four years, Everything at Sweet Lawrence, we've just made it all the same. So all, all of Sweet Lawrence products now are gluten-free, plant-based, dairy-free, peanut tree nut free. And so when we did that and made every product just as clean as possible, meaning that if you just care about good ingredients, delicious taste, we got you. But by the way, if someone in your family cares about plant-based or nut-free or gluten-free, we got them too. And you will not taste the difference. You know, it's just delicious. So when that happened our sales like skyrocketed because I think we really owned something in the market that was different. And we really proved that our product could work in mass supermarkets and really compete against the big guys and beat a lot of the skews that the big guys have. And that to me was when I was able to hire my dream team and finally felt like the cookies were ahead of me versus me constantly like pushing something up a hill. And it begins to almost manifest itself, right? You, you had gotten it to a place into Publix, right? And, and, you know, the night before and getting ready and giving the pitch and then, you know, then delivering, right? Hey, you're going to get these, you're going to get this cookie dough to our stores in our, I mean, and that's, that's that moment where I would imagine for you. And as you mentioned, right, as it became it, it really is now a self-fulfilling item, right? I mean, you're in 15,000 stores and you're now the steward of, okay, what's next, right? How do we maintain that experience? How do we keep our loyal brand? Because someone is, there is another you out there who's in, who's in a spot where they may want to do something like this, right? They, they are going to be up in the middle of the night. They are going to drive and find Enrique who's going to do the hard work, right? <laughs> Yeah. I, I, listen, entrepreneurship, I have so much respect for anyone who's an entrepreneur because I know what it takes. You know, it's it's incredibly long hours. It's caring more than anyone else. It's outsmarting, you know, everyone. So I'm all for it. I I don't think there's anyone on this planet that cares the way I do about this. You know, I just don't. Like my life, all the crazy things that have happened have led me to this moment, you know? So, but yeah, there's a ton of smaller brands out there. You know, it's just you know, we are the number one natural cookie dough brand in the U S and, you know, I don't see that changing. Of course not. Not with that focus. Exactly. You know, and 
And then you hear from customers now, you know, now that we're sold, you know, you know, you, it, it doesn't stop, right? Because someone who loves your brand is like, could you create this next and this? And then you start to see more needs in the market. And then you don't feel like your job is done. Like, like we have so many more things we need to do to create a brand that just solves a lot of problems for people, you know? And so I feel like we're just getting started, even though it's taken a really long time to just have a foothold, you know, now in these stores. There's you, right? There's cookie dough you, there's successful you, right? You're a spouse. Like, where do you recharge? Like, like what's the person we don't see? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, I have an 11 month old. So like, I'm, you know, a new mom, um, which is a whole nother thing, you know, like that's, it's a lot, but I will say obviously having a team is everything, right? Because then you have something that's sustainable and you have people that you hire that are smarter than you in many ways. And so having a team is super helpful. I would say, you know, having a husband who has a great sense of humor and also really understands being an entrepreneur is just like paramount, you know, because, you know, he's my partner and like for him to just always have a cheerleader, always someone who's going to like build you up and be real with you and understand what you're going through. It's just been super important. Time in nature. I mean, I'll tell you, like, that's why I moved to LA from New York was just, I was so burnt out. I was just so burnt out from the concrete. I love New York City, but I'm now, you know, constantly surrounded by sunshine, trees, palm trees. I can go, you know, I can drive 15 minutes and go for an awesome hike and I literally come back completely refreshed. So to me, like being in nature, I, it just really fills me up and being, you know, being with my, my daughter, it, it's like, she's super happy and cute and it, it makes me want to be able to give her more. And it makes me want to, you know, figure out how to continue to scale and delegate so that I have more time you know? So, but I really believe self-care is the most important thing. I think like, you know, I know at the beginning of starting a company, you just have to like give everything, but it's not sustainable, you know? And you really have to make sure I got to a point where I kind of started to hate it. And that's when I was like, this isn't good. Like I need to hire a team. I need, because I, I wasn't dating. It was hard to hang out with friends, you know, all of that. And I think it's just really important to like as an entrepreneur or business person, like figure out what fills you up. And that's just number one. Cause if, if my cup is full, like I'm a superwoman, I can get so much done and I can give so much, but if I'm not full, I'm not happy. I've been on this mission. There's like a lack of truth. I think in the entrepreneurial mindset world that like it's always on. Yeah. Right. Like every day I'm awesome. Every yeah. day I show up ready to do deals every day. I have no doubt. Right. And it's just not true. No, it's not human. And like the, you see it on, you know, the Instagram entrepreneur, right? Like you sleep when you're dead. <laughs> You'll be dead without the sleep. I can promise you that. <laughs> totally. And yeah. I just, I love the vulnerability that like we do need, you know, I need to be away from my business and my spouse is an entrepreneur and together we're married and we're in business together on top of the business we own at Strategist, I have to be away from it. And when I'm away from it is when I find the most inspiration and it brings me back with an energy that I can't even, can't describe it other than just almost like a love for my business. No, that's exactly it. Like, um, I, that's exactly it. I think, you know, especially as the visionary behind it, you have to have that vision and love for it, you know, and not get too exhausted by the nitty gritty. And that's just, for me, that's why hiring a team is so important because, you know, I, I get to focus on the things that give me energy, you know, which is like, I, like I could product and recipe test forever. That being creative is like, to me, so exciting, but you know, the nitty gritty of running the company, you know, handling orders or even going to sales meetings anymore. Like I, I, I don't need to do it. Like the team is smarter than me at that and better. And yeah, I think it's, I think it's, you know, you have to, at the beginning, you have to do what you have to do, but then I think to build something that's really sustainable, I think you just have to figure out what you love doing and what fills you up and really protect yourself in that. Um, because without you or without me, there is no business. So I got to make sure I like am kept in those happy zones 
so that I can constantly refuel the business with the passion and vision. And, and yeah, every, everyone fills up differently. You know, I think for me, like, you know, definitely being out, being in nature with friends, taking hot baths, going out to dinner, like laughing is a really big one, just a really good sense of humor. Yeah. And so you just figure out what, what makes, what fills you up and, and go for it. And I know it's hard with COVID, but you still have to find a way, you know, I love it. And no truer words. All right, we wrap every episode with some kind of big predictions, interesting stories. I got a couple of we just got to get out of here before we leave, right? Yeah. Let's leave the let's leave the the entire grocery space because obviously you're an expert here. But like beyond that, as an entrepreneur, what trends are emerging that interest you? Like what what's what's piquing your interest these days? It's really interesting, just the the whole metaverse. I mean, my husband invests in tech, and so I, I hear it a lot from him. But obviously, it it affects the whole world. But just you know, I guess balancing how exciting it is to be virtual and to live in like you know a completely you know internet based world, yeah. um, and at the same time balancing like what's real, right? Like you, you do need to eat food. You do need to, you know, your family does need hugs and like you need to change a baby's diaper, you know? So I think just, um, it's really interesting to me to just look at like how much is our world going to change between what's physical and like real. And then this other world that's becoming a lot more real in the metaverse and, and how, how is it good for us and maybe bad for us and how do we balance it? The next great frontier for Sweet Lawrence is what? Oh, we have a lot of new exciting products coming in. None you could speak about, I take it. I can't, but they're That's really- okay. I, I don't under, I don't fully appreciate the cookie wars that I may, exactly. I may release an early uh, exactly. No, they're, they're first to market type of product. So they're going to be really exciting. I think make a lot of people happy, but you know, follow us. Sweet Lawrence on Instagram or Facebook or email us and stay in our newsletter. So you can, you know, you can always be kept up to date. Podcasts. What are you listening to? Man, I love how I built this. Okay. And I also listen to Goop because, you know, I'm a female and she, you know, Gwyneth just gets me, you know, Smartless I listen to as well, which is just, you know, fun. I'm a big Jason Bateman fan. And um, I'd say those are, those are probably the top. Some stellar, stellar choices. And I, I, I would be remiss. Uh, our our program manager Chloe would stop the show if I didn't ask this. How did it come that you wore Sarah Blakely's wedding dress? <laughs> so crazy. So first of all, I just she's like a obviously a business guru mentor for female entrepreneurs. And um, the beginning of COVID, so I moved. My husband and I, before we got married, we were, he was living in San Francisco. I was in New York. So we were bi-coastal for two and a half years. And then we decided to move to LA, moved to LA. Two weeks later, COVID happened. We were supposed to get married in May of 2020. Wow. And so that got, our big wedding got canceled. And once we realized how serious COVID was, we were like, oh my God, you know, this is crazy. You know, we have like, but we have to like move on with our life. And so we, you know, we got married, um, legally and then had, um, our daughter. And anyway, so, so Sarah on her Instagram was like, Hey, if anyone's, you know, wedding was canceled, let me know. Like I want to help. And so of course I comment, um, but thinking I'm one of thousands, I'll never hear. And then her PR team reached out and they were like, you know, Sarah loves your story. You, you know, she'd love to loan, be, loan you her wedding dress. She's doing it to like a handful of women. It's like a traveling wedding dress. And I was like, that is so cool. And then um, they're like, so just let us know when it's going to be rescheduled. And so then we kind of, um, she sent a ton of Spanx stuff, super cool. Like they're amazing leggings and they just have a bunch of cool stuff and, um, her dress. And, uh, we did a little ceremony in Malibu on the beach, um, with Skylar, our daughter. So that was pretty magical. I love it. I feel like your story is filled with these kind of, I took a shot. You miss every shot you don't take. Preach. <laughs> Lauren, thank you so much for being on the show what an incredible episode thank you for sharing your story and thank you for making my personal favorite cookie dough thank you for joining today's class with Lauren Brill 
Her story of passion into profession is both inspirational and delicious. I would encourage you to indulge on your next grocery run. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have an idea for our next class, please email the Strategus Podcast Network directly at spn at strategusgroup.com. I'm Adam Geary. Class is closed. <laughs>